Hey everyone, welcome to another Jones and Four show. Today, I have an awesome guest here with you. He's gonna fill you with so much positivity, but not just fill you with love and, and positivity and peace and calm and all that exciting stuff. He's also gonna give you some tips and tricks to help you live your life to the max. This is my buddy, my good friend, the man, the myth, the legend, Cesar Hernandez. Cesar, thank you so much for being here, buddy. Awesome, thank you for having me, man. I'm super excited about being here and you know, adding some energy to the crowd, man. So let's rock. <laughs> Heck yeah, man, it's so awesome. And the Jones and Ford crew, the tribe that we have is absolutely incredible. Um, I've gotten to know Caesar over the past couple of months um, from our friend, Tony Horton, uh, the P90X workout guy. But in any case, he's creating a new program now, a Power Nation group, and it's more than just a workout, it's a whole community. Anyway, so I, I've joined up with that community, learning and meeting lots of awesome people. And one of those people is Caesar. Now Caesar is helping with marketing and doing all that stuff because that's his gig and all that stuff, but we'll get into that. But I just wanted to talk to or let you know real quick, that's how I know him, right? So we've had this connection through fitness and all that stuff. Um, and his energy that I've gotten to see over the last couple of months has been incredible. And I was so excited when he said, yes, I'll be on your show after I invited him because I just, I can't wait to share his energy with you. So there's a little bit of tidbit about you, Caesar, but share with the audience, Tell, tell them about you, who you are, where you came from, what you do, all this stuff. Yeah, so first and foremost, I'm a Cali boy. So, you know, I'm born and raised California, man, and uh, I love California. Um, I know a lot of people are, you know, because of the, the, the climate right now, everybody's trying to migrate to different places. <laughs> <laughs> but I love California, man. There's something about the, you know, it's not just the weather, but there's something about the, the air that you breathe that you know is home. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've lived in different states. I've lived in different places like Indiana. Idaho and, and a couple of different places. So I've been all over the map, but California is really, you know, it's really home. And so um, anyway, so I was born and raised here and, you know, really just wasn't always into fitness, wasn't always into mindset or being a positive person. As a matter of fact, back in 2011 is when I really discovered it. And that was through P90X and Tony Horton and all those programs. And I had just got to a point where I was essentially tired of living the exact same way of having the same tired energy, of not living up to my potential, not being a good, I was a great father, but I wasn't, excuse me, I was a good father, but I wasn't a great father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a single father. So for me, that was super important, you know, for me to, to be able to have that energy and be able to have that mindset and to, to create something that, uh, that would be better. So anyways, long story short, grew up in California, didn't have good habits, didn't, you know, wasn't raised in the best of the areas, wasn't raised with the best of the mindsets. So I essentially had to learn all of this stuff in my 20s, right? And so as I sat there trying to think about, okay, how can I improve my life? How can I improve my mindset? You know, the, the, um, the next logical things as I asked those questions was, okay, is working out, mindset stuff, you know, uh, personal development stuff, all those things kind of, I started discovering those things. Right. And those were like the next logical steps. And so I, as I started to discover those things, that's where everything just really kind of changed in my life and really kind of put me in a space where I knew that this was this is what I wanted to spend my life spreading and helping people with fitness, mindset and all that sort of stuff. Um, I had I ran a gym for about what was it, about five and a half, six years, something like that. Ran my own personal gym right here in California. And that was awesome. We changed thousands of lives, man. Thousands of people, tra transformations. Like that was absolutely mind blowing. Uh, from going for somebody who was not even into fitness, not at all into fitness, like zero, zip, <laughs> <laughs> no education, no nothing. And uh, once I lost 75 pounds with P90X, and I I, I lost the weight, and I when I mean, it was just a transformation that was just crazy. I decided that I wanted to go help people and do that sort of stuff. Kind of went through the normal channels, became a a, a coach of some sorts uh, for different companies and stuff like that. And then I decided that I wanted to open up my own facility and, and all those things. But anyways, man, that's kind of like a little bit bouncing around in, inside of my history of what it is that, uh, that I've done. Um, but I ran that gym for about, you know, like I said, about five and a half, six years. And I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed helping people take themselves from uh, one level to another not just with fitness. And this is the, the important thing. It was always about mindset. It was always about, you know, how can you take your mental state to another level? Because if you take your mental state to another level, your body follows and your transformation happens. 
And I picked up a lot of those tips and tricks and, you know, different uh, philosophies from our pal, Tony Horton. Um, and that's how I kind of got my start. So anyways, that's just a little bit about my background and how I got started with this thing. It seems like you and I have very similar paths when it comes to this, right? I was not into fitness at all. I was not an athletic kid whatsoever. There is no fitness, you know, at all. I hated <laughs> any thought of it. Running hurt when I forced myself to just because I hated the way I looked and felt and I thought that would help. And, you know, like most people, I try a workout or try something and then I quit a couple weeks into it or may maybe not even a couple days, a day or two into it and just failing over and over again. But uh, my journey started in 2013, so just a couple years after yours, um, and then I lost 20 pounds of P90X, and overall, with all the different programs I've done, um, uh, 40 pounds. But uh, what, what struck me is shortly after um, going through P90X and hearing Tony talk, and then becoming a coach like you through different MLMs and, and doing that, the mindset part came into it. And I always thought it was just physical, right? I never thought about the mindset until learning about personal development and then that road started opening up to me and i've learned so much and it's this constant journey now so much so that you know i was a middle school high school teacher for nine years loved doing that and loved helping students lives but then i felt i was called elsewhere to teach slightly differently so more from the stage and do coaching and things like that but now through the mindset i've learned so much and and have seen the the way it transforms a person uh, that when I was coaching and doing that just before through fitness, it was mainly fitness stuff, food and fitness, which is great, but you need to get that mindset right. And I was learning that at the time. And now I feel like I'm pretty far ahead and I'm still learning and still growing like we all can do. But that's why Jones and Four is out there now helping people live their life to the max through physical stuff, nutrition, but also that that yeah. mental component, that that training. So that's really awesome that, that you had that from the get-go. Like, way to go, man. That is huge. Yeah, you know, it's one of these things where I seen, I, what I started to notice was as I was transforming my body and as I was transforming the way that I felt about myself and the way that I looked at myself in the mirror, I remember like it was a different thought process every day when I woke up. Something was changing, something was shifting, something was, I, I had a better attitude when it came to my kids. I had a better attitude when it came to dealing with problems. One of my favorite sayings, I can't remember where it came from. I got a lot of uh, personal development gurus and, play, and people that I've studied from. So sometimes it, get all it gets all mashed together. But one of the, um, I, want to, I want to credit Jim Rohn. I think Jim Rohn was the one that said this. But he said, you can determine the size of a man by the, by the size of the problems that get him down. And I remember when I heard that, it was, it was so prolific for me because I, I used to sit there and say, wow, the problems that get me down, uh, you know, it, in the current state that I'm at, they're very little problems. I get pissed off in traffic and I get mad at my kids right. if they spill something on the side. If I get, and I, I started realizing real quickly, I'm like, I'm not that great of a man. I'm not that big of a person. Mentally, I'm just not where I need to be. And that really kind of struck me. That was one of these things that said, wow, I, I need to make that change and that shift and, and, and I need to do something about this. And that's where that whole personal development thing just kind of took over my life. You know, it's like hashtag PD, man, all day long. <laughs> you know, right. it's like, you know, it's one of these things where it's like you get into the books and you start doing, you start reading, you start discovering, you start understanding different things, and you start, you know, you go down the whole rabbit hole of the law of attraction, and then that you're walking around like, okay, I'm attracting everything into my life, like <laughs> all these sort of things, right? And you go through that, and a maturity happens after a while where you figure out it's the daily things, it's all the things that you do every single day, day in day out, day in day out, that add up to this insurmountable amount of happiness that you can have right um and of course you know it's one of these things where we all go through our our, our um our rabbit holes of de depression anxiety stress you know i did a post the other day that i was talking about and, and it was so funny because i think people thought i was saying i was depressed today or now right. <laughs> it was a post i put a post out it was a picture of me with my head down and i was in my gym and i was talking about how i at one point suffered from massive depression and what I figured out was, was that I was able to rid like 99% of that, right? Like just by exercising, eating good food, putting myself in good places, uh, having great conversations, reading good books, doing these things. But there's always that 1% that is there that is trying to get you at all times. It never goes away. It never goes away. It's one of these things where it's like, if you stop doing the activity, if you stop moving, if you stop having positive conversations, if you stop... Um, reading and doing these things, it, it just wants to come back. 
it just wants to snag you right back and say, oh, you remember this? You remember, you remember feeling depressed, right? You remember feeling anxiety? <laughs> oh, here's a panic attack. Here you go. Like all those things want to creep back in. And so it's so important. I, and I, I, you know, I ended that whole post by saying, you know, uh, if you've ever felt this way, comment below, you know, every damn day, because we're fighting every damn day to make sure that that doesn't happen. And so I, if I can encourage anybody out there right now, just let them know, like, every single activity doesn't matter if it's a rest day or if it's a workout day or whatever it is every single activity through your day is going to either add up uh, for you or you know count against you so let's go man exactly it's this compound effect that, that happens in our life that work you put in every single day adds up to this huge snowball of awesomeness or huge snowball of negativity and, and whatever it is right um, I think about them like you could say little demons or devils or even take it even a little more PG if you want and think of just the weeds in your life. And there's always those yeah. weeds that want to grow and take over. And if you give them energy, if you feed them by paying attention to them and not, not, personal, uh, not doing personal development or growth or anything like that, they're going to start taking hold and growing and, and spreading. But if you give the positive things their energy, right? Die personal development by going after goals, by making sure you're healthy and fit and doing the things you love to do, chasing your passions, then you'll, you'll um, hold off, I should say, right? Hold off those weeds and keep them at bay. So those tough days, yeah, we all have tough days. We all do. But it's through that personal development that you're able to make it through those and get stronger and better because of it. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. I love it. So you mentioned that you have, you've learned a couple of things that you do daily now, and we're talking about these daily tasks that help people and compound. What are things that you do specifically that can help, that helps you and can help the, the listeners and people viewing uh, the Jones and Four show? What, what can they do yeah. to help them? So, so I set up, I set up what I call my non-negotiables. Okay. And I, I actually got that term from one of my buddies, um, uh, Eric Thomas. So there's ET is a, uh, uh, motivational speaker right and so et is one of my good friends man met him a few years back i uh, helped him with his marketing we can get into that a little later but i helped him with his marketing and set up some stuff for him which is you know it was phenomenal was such a great journey but one of the things that they used to always talk about in their circle um you know is uh, uh, eric thomas and cj right hand man we got carl and you have all these guys that they used to just be so tight-knit and their game was just so on point like it was just constantly they were just sharp and so I started to ask them, you know, what are some of the, a very similar question. And um, I remember uh, uh, CJ turned to me and he's like, dude, you got to have non-negotiables. Like every single day, it's a non-negotiable. You got to, you got to block these things out and make these things happen every single day, no matter what can come hell or high water, it has to happen. And so the non-negotiables that he was talking about was, you know, stuff like exercise, make sure that you're reading and doing these things. So for me, I started to set up non-negotiables and I started to say, okay, so what are some of the, the things that I can do that I'm not negotiating with on, on any sort of day? So uh, one of those non-negotiables, of course, is getting up and getting my workout uh, first thing in the morning. Before the, sun, before the sun gets up, comes up, I am going to get that workout in. I'm not go the second non-negotiable is not, I'm not looking at my phone other than turning on my music to put into my headphones so that way I can work out. I'm not looking at Instagram. I'm not looking at Facebook. I'm not looking at Twitter. Well, I don't even have Twitter, to be honest with you. I'm not <laughs> looking at any of those things. I don't look at news. I don't look at anything like today. You know, today's the day after uh, elections and it's very tempting to go and see, hey, who won the election or who, you know, who, what's going on there? Didn't even, wasn't even tempted. Just like, just not even in my, in my mind because it's not negotiable. So then I get up, work out, uh, you know, uh, not check my phone. Once my workout is done, then that goes, you know, depending on your spirituality, I, I go spend an hour in prayer uh, and worship. So then I'll do some hour, uh, an hour of prayer and worship, stand there, heck, spend, sometimes I'll dance, <laughs> nice. sometimes I'll dance, man, I'll start dancing in my room, it's, you know, 6.30 in the morning and the kids are sleeping, I'm making all this noise, um, <laughs> and just dancing around upstairs, man, and, and I'll do that, and this is, like, there's, there hasn't been any emails, and, and trust me, you know, in my business, there's emails that come in all different types of, t times of the day, because of the fact that there's either a client reaching out, or there's somebody that we have, in the, for instance, Power Nation, there's people in different countries. So I get emails at 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. 
five o'clock in the morning, I get messages, people on the East Coast who think I'm awake and it's like three o'clock in the morning at six o'clock over there. So like, you know, I get messages all the time. So I have to be very careful on how, how it is that I, I go about that. So that's another non-negotiable is not checking those messages before all that time has come, right? Um, I need to make sure that I spend time with my kids and tell them I love them every single day. I grew up in a home that my mom was raising seven of us by herself, wow. seven children. I want you to imagine this, seven children that had a lot of energy by herself all the way until I was a teenager. My mom was a single mom. She's, she's still single now. And so it's one of these things where um, it's one of these things where I have to make sure that I tell my kids I love them because when we were growing up and my mom had seven of us, guess what? We didn't hear that word. We never heard that. My mom was busy grinding and trying to feed all of us, put clothes on her back, shoes on her feet, and food on the table. So we didn't have the opportunity to be loved on. We didn't have an opportunity for my mom to come over and say, hey, I love you. I don't, I, Spence, I'm going to be completely honest and raw with you. I have no idea what it sounds like to hear my mom say, I love you. I can't remember one time where my mom said, I love you. Wow. Not time. And it's not like that we don't have a great relationship. It's not like we're not super close. I give her hugs all the time. As a matter of fact, I'm the only one out of all seven of my, uh, uh, of my siblings that actually hugs my mom. Right? <laughs> so that non-negotiable, you can see why it's so strong in my mind, where right. I'm like, that's not acceptable. I didn't have a father. I barely had a mom because she was constantly grinding. She was there, but she wasn't there. I never received those words, not from my mom, not from my dad. So it's a non-negotiable to make sure as a single father, I'm going to make sure that I tell my kids, I love you every single day. Right. And so those are certain things. And, and you just to be able to put together your non-negotiables, you got to be able to know where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do. I'm not talking about just like career wise, but who, what's the type of person that you're trying to develop in yourself? Who are you trying to be? Where are you trying to go in your lifetime? I don't know if anybody knows this, but I heard from a very good source that we can't get out of life alive. It just won't happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So <laughs> my friends, make sure that you take advantage of every single day because we're going to be gone. We're just, it's, it's it. We're, we're one day it's clock. We're clocking out, you know, everything goes away, man. And so for me, these non-negotiables are the things that I do every single day. And that's just a handful of them. But those are just a, a handful of things that I do every single day that we, they're just no negotiating, right? I don't pick up every single call that comes through my phone. I don't pick up every single email message that comes through my phone on a daily basis because I know that if it's not within the times that I have selected for those sort of things, it's going to throw my day off. It's going to take me down some sort of other rabbit hole that I don't need to be going down. So protecting, protecting my pieces is very important. And I've heard you say protect your peace a couple times here over the past month or so uh, in the groups and just on social media. And I love, love that quote. I love the fact you have these non-negotiables in your day. And that's something you hear a lot about in personal development. But uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you and everyone watching and listening that they're tough. Like they are tough to put into your day and make sure that you're non-negotiables. Um, I have a thing that I call j jaggers that are my, pretty much are, that are my non-negotiables. So um, they're journaling every day. You exercise uh, um, affirmations every day. Uh, you do your gratitudes, exercise, and then reflection, right? Mm -hmm. So your jakers. So those happen every single day. Those are my non-negotiables um, that need to happen. But there are days when it is so tough to be like, oh, I, I woke up late. I won't be able to get this in. I'm like, no, nope, this needs to happen, right? And yeah. it's it's hard. And there's, I'll be honest, some days, as much as I try to get that in, it doesn't. And I try not to beat myself up over it to be like, oh man, this is a non-negotiable. You have to. And then I say, hey, you're human. Give yourself grace. Tomorrow's the next day. Pick it up. Let's go and, and keep it going. So it's days like that, you know, that, that happen to all of us, uh, at least for me. I'm assuming for you at points too, but for everyone watching, do create the non-negotiables. What's important to you? I love the fact, Caesar, that you, based on your experiences, experience of your mom and your family, and you're like, I don't, I, I feel the love from her, but I want to make sure my kids hear it and yeah. feel it from me. And so you're drawing on that past experience, helping them. And you might see that now in them and they're appreciative of it, maybe, depending how old they are, but <laughs> you, you'll see it when they're older and they'll appreciate it even more when they're older and have kids of their own, and their families, they'll see and appreciate that. And it's just so incredible to hear you have those non-negotiables. 
So um, those are just a couple things that you said and I mentioned of non-negotiables that to start your day or end your day and having your day. Um, the other thing, the nugget that you shared that I want to just pull out a little bit is you have specific times to do certain things. And that is huge, especially if you're your own business, own your own business. But even if you don't, like you're like, I don't pick up my phone. I don't, I don't look at social media until this time. I only look at my emails from this time to this time or whatever it is. And that is huge to, mm -hmm. to keep, to, to protect your peace, right? As you say, right? You want to protect your peace by, by segmenting it. Again, it's really hard, especially in a age and day society and technology where we're go, go, go. Oh, we want instant gratification. Oh, they text me, they need an instant response. No, no they don't, right? And it's something that I struggle with and I'm getting better at. Some days I'm really good, other days I struggle with it, but I keep getting better. And I suggest you all do the same thing. You, you decide, I'm gonna look at emails at this time to this time, that's it. I'm going to not look at my phone from this time to this time. Yep. Yeah, one of my, my goals that I'm working towards is being on my phone less and less um, at, in the evening time, right? Because my evening time, it's for a time for me to spend it with my wife, relax, enjoy it. And I don't want social media being a distraction. So what do I do, I turn my phone upside down or I put it on airplane mode or do not disturb, set it off to the side, and I don't look at it. I just spend the time with her watching movies, chatting, whatever it is. Yep. So huge, man. I, I love, love, love your non-negotiables and that you segment that out. Yeah, um, one, one, one of the things before we get to that next piece, one of the things that I do, Spence, is, is I, I keep my phone completely on silent at all times. Yep. And let me tell you what, I was finding that the dings and the blings and the blind, <laughs> all these sounds that were coming from my phone constantly had me looking down uh, at my phone and going and saying and making it almost like I had to go and answer that email at that particular moment or whatever it was, right? What I have learned is that the world tries to make its emergency your emergency. Mm. It tries to make it tries to make their problems your problem at that point in time, right? And that's not how it works, man. It's just there's just so much more peace in saying the world is on my time, right? And as long as you're not like dragging this out to like a month or like, all right, let me send you a message now, it's been a month. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there are specific times throughout the day that, that we, that I go and do that. But I always keep my phone on silent because of the fact that I just know that all those notifications and all those things are just going to be a distraction to pull me right back into that phone. And it's going to go against the ultimate goal of peace. Right. I don't know about you, man, but I've learned after being a businessman for, for many years and having to go through these motions and learning and, and figuring these things out. I know that there's not huge emergencies that are just so important that I have to have my, my attention at my phone at all times. It's a bunch of small stuff. It's an email about, you know, particular employee or this or that or a contract or whatever it is. Small little things that could be taken care of in the time that they're supposed to be taken care of. And so what I'm going to tell everybody is that protecting your peace is such a big part of the way that I live. Like most people probably would think that, you know, the way I live is like super tight, super structured, super like, you like living in this box, but let me tell you something, there's way more freedom within this box than there is for everything being all over the place. Guarantee you, you have way more freedom. I can do more things. I can achieve more. I accelerate at a faster rate than most people that I know, just because I focus in, just because I put myself in this little box and I say, I'm not drawing outside of that box and you can't bring me outside of that box because this is the structure in which I have set up. I'm intentional about it. I want my children to be good, solid, good human beings. I'm intentional about that. I want my life to feel a certain way. I'm intentional about that. And if that puts me in a box sometimes, that's completely fine. I would encourage you to actually embrace being in a box sometimes. Yes. Embrace that schedule. Embrace that because the world can't mess with you when you have these non-negotiables and these things that you refuse to draw outside of these lines with. So anyways, I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> Dude, that no, I, I love that you threw that in there because that is so huge. And it's something I preach and talk about and do for myself, right? It's scheduling. It's, um, I call it creating your balance, right? Your work, life, passion, balance. And if folks are interested in finding your balance, I have it on my website. Go for it. You'll see an ad that says create work, life, passion, balance worksheet. Download it. It's free and it helps you balance it out. But essentially what it is, is it forces you to create a schedule. Well, it encourages you to create a schedule. And then you create a schedule for yourself 
what time you are doing what in your life. I'm checking my phones, I'm checking my emails, I'm spending time with my kids, I'm cooking, I'm working out, whatever it is. But you're putting yourself into these boxes because that allows you to focus on whatever task you have at hand at the time. Because when you focus, you're not getting distracted, you're able to get more done and excel that much more because you are in that box. I totally love that analogy. And as I said, folks, go to spencermjones.com, get yourself your free copy of it. I even have an online course on there if that's something you're interested in with videos, but that's besides the point. But get yourself in that box because that's gonna make such a huge difference in your life. And you know, technology is great. Phones, cell phones, computers, all that's great, but they design it. It is designed for those notification dings, things that are going to distract you to pick it up, to use it, to get you off of your things. And you know, when you first get a phone, at least when we were younger, at least, and maybe even a new phone, it's like, oh, look, oh, this is so cool. I can't wait to get notifications. Oh, look, I'm, people love me. I'm getting that dopamine kick because, oh, I got an email, I got this, text, all that. And I've gone to the point where with my phone, social media things, I turn off the notifications. I see that, you know, so many notifications from Facebook or Instagram, and I need to check those because I like getting rid of those things, right? Seeing those notifications go away. And I've gotten to the point where I get rid of it, right? I don't see them anymore. They don't pop up on my phone. They, they might be on the app and I can control that myself, but you can't even get rid of that. So it doesn't even show up as like, you have these notifications. It's protecting your peace, which yes. is huge. And you need to do it because the outside world's trying to fight it and get you to play outside your box. But you need to stay within that schedule, that zone, so you can get so much more done. Yep, absolutely, man, 100%. Hey everyone, I wanna personally invite you to our five-day positivity challenge. It's a group on Facebook where we challenge you to grow and enhance your positivity in your life and see more positivity around you. Now this challenge happens every month, so it's never too late to join. Hop on Facebook, search Five Day Positivity Challenge, and look for the group with the sun shining as our logo, and make sure you join us for our next challenge. Thanks so much. Let's head back to the episode. So where, let me ask you this question, coming from the gym life where you were before and helping people with their mindset and all that, personal development, you're accelerating, you have your, your daily habits, your non-negotiables, where has that taken you now? Because you, you said that it accelerates you, but where has it accelerated you to? So, okay, so for years, I was helping people with their fitness, their mindset, and all these, these different things. And that's why I, I've been able to help uh, Tony in this instance with, with Power Nation, because I've come with so much experience from that whole world. Like that is my, uh, the brick and mortar is my world, right? <laughs> like I was, I was the guy that was, uh, you know, doing all these challenges and having hundreds of people. I'll send you some videos sometimes, Spencer. But I, but I have all, I used to work out like 100 people in a parking lot at a time. I said, wow. like, it, so many crazy things going on. But the way in which that has excelled me is that I was running the gym for, you know, that, that, that bit of time. And I started to kind of started to see like, you know what, there, this is great. This is phenomenal. This is awesome. But once again, I have found myself where I'm stagnant, where I'm only here and I can't grow beyond this thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I felt my touch was impacting the lives of the people that were inside of my gym. I felt like my impact was going to the children, to their husband. I knew it was because they were coming in on Saturdays, bringing their husband, bringing their kids, bringing like all these people. We're having special events. We're having uh, dinners and stuff. So all the family was coming to like, dude, all we hear is Coach C, Coach C, Coach C. And I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I knew that that impact was happening, but I also knew that I wanted to accelerate more. So yeah. then uh, it, I'll never forget the day. I, uh, I jumped in a plane and I flew out to Indianapolis, Indiana, super random, right? Right. But that's actually where my kids were born, right? So they, they, they were born in Indianapolis, Indiana. So they're technically Hoosiers. They're not California kids, but they, they, <laughs> they, feel, they feel like they're California kids, but they're technically Hoosiers. Anyway, so I flew out to Indianapolis and that's where I met uh, my good friend, Eric Thomas. Now I flew out there because I wanted to have a little bit of motivation. I'd been uh, listening to his podcast and watching his content. I said, wow, this guy's awesome. Let me go and fly out and go see it. So I went and got me a VIP ticket, you know, being a little bougie and just, all right, let me just get the best of the best. I'm just, I want to get next to the guy, right? Right. And so I got next to the guy and I remember I raised up my hand and I asked a certain question and it got his attention really fast, like super fast. And the reason I, I say all that is because 
the type of question that I asked wasn't a regular consumer type of question. It wasn't just like one of his guys who were just coming for motivation. It was something that was sharp. It was something that had to do with business. It was something that caught his attention in ways that nobody else was able to in that entire room. And there's several hundred of us in the room. So afterwards, he comes up to me and he's like, who are you guys? Like, <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? What, what's your story? What are you doing? Right. So we ended up talking. We exchanged numbers. Next thing I know, I'm flying out. It was probably about two or three months later. I'm flying out to Atlanta, Georgia to go help him with his marketing, right? To go help him with this stuff. Gave him an idea. That idea exploded. I can't tell you exact figures, but it was around seven. Uh, <laughs> that did amazing for him in his business. And that was the beginning of where I started to say, okay, I have a knack for this thing. I like helping with movements. I like helping with people who are the movers and shakers of the world people who are trying to make an impact. And sometimes I like to be the guy behind the guy. So that way I don't always have to be the front person, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I got a very loud personality, very loud personality, <laughs> right? And it's like, and it's shown. And if you go on my Facebook, you'll see it. It's very loud personality. But I also am very comfortable with the fact that I don't have to be the guy at all times. I don't have to be that person. That is a personal development thing. Thank you, Jim Rohn. And <laughs> so, so it has helped me to accelerate my life, personal development, working out, exercise, mental well-being, all that sort of stuff has helped me to accelerate and get into rooms that I didn't even think that I was able to get into. Sometimes I started to get into rooms where I would scratch my head and say, I better just be quiet right now because I'm just going to learn from all of the amazingness in this room. Right. Your talent will get you to rooms sometimes you don't even know how you got there. Hmm. Sometimes your talent will get you into rooms and you're like, how did I, what? What can you imagine? Can you imagine? This is a guy who lost 75 pounds, P90X and Sandy and all these programs. And all of a sudden I find myself driving up to Tony's house and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm actually going to the dude that changed my life. Like I'm going to his house. Now I'm sitting there in his house, giving him advice on what he should do with his market. I'm like, this is crazy. This is an absolute crazy moment in my life right now and that's what i'm saying these things these principles these non-negotiables these things that, that that seemingly in the motion of doing them are boring are st you feel stagnant you feel like you're just doing you're just showing up every single day doing the same thing these are the things that get you to those places that you actually want to be right now tony horn's become a friend talk to him almost every other day right it's one of these things we're constantly in contact we're working together we're partners now it's like this is crazy to me. It's, it's absolutely crazy to me. So what I would say is that to encourage everybody in this whole, this whole idea of personal development, working out, accelerating your, your life, is that you got to understand that you got you to gotta have daily targets to be able to get to any sort of target that you're trying to get to in the, in the long run. Right? You got to have those daily targets. You got to be able to like hit those targets every single day, those non-negotiables, all those things, because that right there is going to accelerate you and put you in places that you never thought possible. Those rooms, <laughs> when you get in those rooms and you're sitting there, you know, I'm sitting here staring right across at my hero who changed, who literally changed the trajectory of my life. Tony Horton was that guy. He was the guy that took me from this point all the way to this. And I was like, holy smokes, my whole gym's philosophy was built around everything I learned from Tony. We did the namastes. We did all, we did, we used, to, we used to rip Tony off so hard. Do your best, forget the rest, everybody. You know, I, I, you know, I used that as my tagline for years. And I told Tony that too. But it's one of these things where you, 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 you can get into certain places. You can go, certain, go, uh, go to certain places and be around certain people that you just never thought you could. And so anyways, it's it, because there's a certain energy. There's, certain, there's something different now. Life is different. It's not the same. When you, when you walk into a grocery store, you can walk in one of two ways. You can walk in and just kind of be an average Joe, just whatever, just kind of here to get my apples, kind of here to get my healthy salary, like, okay, right? Or you can get in there and have some energy. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing, buddy? Hey, listen, it's good to see you today. You take care. And you start having that energy, that energy starts to feed back to you. People start to open up doors, certain certain opportunities start to come up that you might not have had because you didn't open up your mouth and you didn't smile, right? These days I have to smile really big because we have masks. So I have to smile really big, squint my eyes, make sure that they're like this, 
So that way people know I'm smiling, right? And go out of my way to say things extra loud because I'm muffled and I'm people going to hurt. So I have to say those things, right? But anyways, I'm going off on a little tangent, but yeah, leaping to places and going to places and being a part of a special, amazing opportunities in your life is so worth it, man. And that's what all of those things will, will do for you. It's doing those. So if I'm hearing right, it's doing those non-negotiables, staying focused on those and those daily tasks that, you know, first of all, you got to set big goals to push yourself, smart goals, all that stuff, have a strong reason why and all that, and then break it down into those daily tasks. So you're always doing something to get to work towards something bigger, something better, and improving yourself through the non-negotiables, through the daily tasks that you're doing. But it's more than that, too. To get in, on those stages, to get in those rooms that, that you're talking about, you need to, first of all, be confident and courageous by smiling at other people, maybe stepping outside your comfort zone, and just even just a little bit by smiling at someone or saying hi to someone and, and letting that, your energy come out in that sense. But also, it you know, takes confidence, courage, and you also have to be open, right? You have to be confident to be open enough and willing to, to let the universe, God, whatever you want to believe, earth, wind, fire, to open itself to you and say, hey, come over here. Let's see, let's, let's see where this guides you. And all of a sudden, you find yourself talking to your hero, Tony Horton, or all of a sudden now working with... Thomas, right, and, and building up things there, and all these other people that you're now friends with, and building great rapport with, and impacting even more people, right? You impacted hundreds and thousands of people through your gym and their lives, their families, and you impacted so many people that way. But now you helped and inspired and empowered thousands and millions of people by just being able to help other people because you stepped outside your comfort zone, you took that leap of faith, and you, you're confident and courageous enough to go do that and be open to what the universe told you. And you know what, let me, let me encourage somebody right now, because there's going to be somebody that's watching this that says, Caesar, that's great, but you're an extrovert, and I'm an introvert, and I can't do that. Mm. Caesar, Caesar, that's great, but I, I, I get sweaty palms just thinking about talking to somebody. I'm actually an introvert. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm actually an introvert. I have learned, ex I have extrovert tendencies because I have practiced them over time. You know how I know I'm an introvert? Because if I'm around a big crowd, I get super tired. Like I can be around the crowd and be there for an hour and then have to go and take a four hour nap because my brain is just, whoo, right? Oh. <laughs> my brain is just totally drained because I have learned that even though I'm an introvert, naturally that's what i am i want to be too i like you know, i like being in my own cocoon i like having my thoughts i like being there i don't like a lot of noise around me like that right but i can step up and i can be in that noise i could be present in that noise i could be effective in that noise i could communicate in that noise i can do those things but i'm not naturally an extrovert i'm not somebody who just wants to be around people just to have energy around me all the time i need my peace man <laughs> right. you know everybody needs to turn down the volume a little bit, right? Like, please turn down the volume a little bit. And so I want to give somebody encouragement right now. You don't have to be an extrovert. You don't have to be somebody who's over the top. You don't have to be somebody. You just have to be started. You have to get started on, on shaping the person that you want to become. And if that means, you know, in my family, um, we didn't see a whole lot of smiles and we didn't see a whole lot of hugs. We didn't see a whole lot of, um, um, I'm glad to see you. Like, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? We didn't see a lot of that. You know, we seen, we seen, come over here, man. I'm, I'm going to choke you out. <laughs> right? like, you took the damn toilet paper. Where you get out of here, man? You know, you bug me. Get away. All those sort of things. So, so, so <laughs> that's what I see in my family. So you may be sitting there saying, it's totally foreign to me, Caesar. And that's why you have to be able to get into the books. You have to be able to start to go read from the authors that are uh, that have done this I think one of the, the greatest books that has ever written been ever been written here's here's my my big bomb right here and most people probably know this one but one of the greatest books that I ever read that changed my life drastically and massively and where I got a lot of these principles from was don't sweat the small stuff and when I read don't sweat the small stuff it really taught me that everything that we're tripping on everything that we're worried about every it's gonna be so small Spencer my kids in 2000 and let me see my son was born in 2005 so it was shortly after my son was born, my kids were kidnapped from me dude kidnapped 
for three months by an unstable mom who is completely drugged out, like, like massively crazy. Like I found them in a crack house, head lice, filthy, dirty, nasty. I busted through the door. I seen a bunch of crap all over the place. It was terrible. Rats running around, the worst case scenario. And now I talk about it like it's no big deal. <laughs> but wow. back, back when that happened, when that happened to me, I was freaking out. Right. When that happened to me, I was ready to kill somebody. When that happened to me, I was, I was ready just to just do something crazy because my children's lives were at stake, right? And so something as massive as that, as dramatic as that, now in my life is just a memory of, that I look at and I say, oh yeah, remember when that happened? That was crazy. Like, like you know, and, and this is what I'm trying to tell everybody. The things that you are making a big deal about right now, I guarantee you in one year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now, are not gonna be as big of a deal as you're making it right now. So the idea is to be able to just let it go as much as you possibly can. And the only way that you can do that strategically and easily is if you're working out, you're feeling good, you're meditating, you're doing all these things, you have these non-negotiables because it just helps you. If you're sitting there eating a ding dong, some hot Cheetos and a Diet Coke, I understand why you're depressed, I understand. But if you're working out, you're doing burpees and you're eating some broccoli, you should be fine. You should be okay because your mindset's at a different place now, right? So anyways, that's... <laughs> it's, it all boils down to mindset right yep. the, the physical aspect of it is huge but the mindset is the big kahuna really and yes. and holy cow i did not know that experience of yours before and the fact that, that that's life-changing and that can make someone really strong like it has you or make them crumble but the difference is personal development right that made the huge difference for you yep. and because now you're able to look back on it and instead of it being like holy crap, or, uh, now our life is horrible. It's like, no, we've grown from it. When well, we can look back and laugh at it and, and see that, hey, we learned, we grew from this. And yep. that's all from personal development, which is absolutely, absolutely huge. Yep. Mm -hmm. So looking back on our conversation just through today, right, we're about 40 or so minutes in, um, we've talked about a lot of things, protecting your peace, right? Finding your peace. And that's really what this whole episode is about, protecting your peace, right? Finding your non-negotiables, focusing on those um, every single day, right? Things that you are not negotiable. You make them happen every single day, focusing on those things, plus being willing to step outside your comfort zone and seeing where the universe takes you and spreading your energy, right? And sharing your energy out with the world because who knows where it's going to take you and lead you in life. And as always, doing that personal development, learning to grow, and not just reading the books, not just listening to the audiobooks or doing like that. You actually have to implement what you learn. Reading, it's one thing. You have to implement it, practice it daily, and let it build the snowball effect. Because if you give that positive energy, you do that PD and all that, that positive energy is going to grow, 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 and it's going to take you to some amazing places and have incredible experiences based on that. Would, would you agree that's a decent summary of today? Absolutely. And, and one of the things I'm going to uh, encourage everybody to do is as you go through your personal development journey, do not expect everyone to understand. Do not everybody. Do not expect if you're married. Don't expect your husband or your wife to get it right off the bat. Don't if, if don't expect your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your sister, your or your your auntie, your uncle. Don't expect them to be right on the wagon because guess what? They were there when you were failing. They were there when you were saying you were going to do things and you didn't follow through. They were there. They witnessed it. And this whole person development thing has a way has a way of pulling you away from the rest of the world because your mindset is you're not trying to have the gossip conversations anymore you're not trying to have those those things around you anymore and so you have to be very careful and methodical and, and not get offended when people don't understand it right from the get you have to prove it out you have to prove it out i'll, I'll, I'll say this real quick and I'll, I'll i'll let you take it back <laughs> but i just this thought just came back to my my head there's three there's three things three phases that every great idea goes through Three phases. Number one, it's criticized. Number two, it's violently opposed. And number three, it serves as self-evident. If you look through history, anything through history that has been worth uh, 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 worthwhile, anything through history that has been true, anything through history that has made an impact has gone through those three phases. Let me give you an example. Yeah, even if you're not a believer, let me just 
put this in your head. Jesus Christ was criticized. Who's this cat in the synagogues preaching and teaching? And who is this guy? <laughs> what? And uh, this dude needs to get out of here, man. Violently opposed. Hang him. Hang him on a cross. Beat him. Whip him. He's saying he's the son of God. Dude, kill that dude. Violently opposed. Number three, serves as self-evident. Most of the world now accepts him for who he is, right? So those are the three things that you always have to think about. You have to think about what phase are we in right now? Right? If people are giving you some kickback, if people are not understanding, you have to say, it's okay, you just in phase number one. Or when your husband, your wife, if your husband and wife starts to get like, dude, like serious, like stop talking about that Tony Horton guy or that you know, Coach T guy, stop, like I don't care, that's good for you, but it's not for me. Oh, you're just in phase number two. It's okay, don't worry about it, it's fine. And then what happens is, wait a minute, hey, you lost 25 pounds, can you show me how you, what, what, Diet were you on? What program were you? Phase number three, serves as self-evident. Don't be discouraged when you're going through this journey and those phases are happening. It's supposed to. <laughs> it's supposed to, right? Spencer, here's one that you understand. We first came out and you, you see me, man, on launch of Beta Group, I got eaten up on the internet crazy. Like right. I'm talking, I have never been torn apart, torn apart so bad. <laughs> online ever in my life i was like wow <laughs> that's kind of crazy right and now I've, we went through those phases and now what we're on the other side of it serves the self-evident people understand the vision now they understand where we're going right but i just had to go through those phases and and, and allow people to go through their emotions and 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 you know go through those particular things and so i didn't let it get me down i didn't let it like just put me down like i'm not gonna lie the first day was kind of hard <laughs> right <laughs> couple of days after that, it was cool. But that, you know, that's, that's what you want to keep in mind. You want to keep in mind that those phases will happen. And that this journey is a, is a journey that you have to continuously work on. You know, read that book and you read it one time doesn't mean that your life is going to be changed forever. It just means that you're going to have to go back to that book over and over and over and over and practice work knowledge, activity knowledge, work knowledge, activity knowledge. You got to go put it to work and go see how it works in your life, come back, read the book again. Go put it back into action, come back, read it again. Forever and ever and ever, man, forever. It's, it's a continual process, right, of, of sharpening that ax or whatever, right? You're just honing it in by putting it into practice, going back to that guide again, whatever, it's the same one, or even different books and learning from that and putting it to practice and coming back. And, and you'll once you read a lot of personal development books, you realize they're telling the same things in different verbiage, in different ways, right? I wrote my own personal development book, um, Chase Your Passions, and nothing in it is new. You know, yep. it's all been said before, but it's just through a different lens that might strike a chord with someone. And it's all honing that in and just sharpening your your axe, your sword, whatever, right? By doing it over and over again. And you're right. There's people go through those three phases. I wouldn't tell those phases to their person's face like, oh, oh yeah, you're in phase one. Yeah, <laughs> my, my wife would not like that one. Um, yeah. Or phase two, whatever it is. <laughs> Don't do that. But, um, you know, just know that, that they need to work through things. And, you know, in the case with like the launch, for those of you that don't know, um, when Tony Horton and Caesar launched this, his new Power Nation beta group and all that, um, Caesar, uh, it, it, it was interesting how it was done and a lot of people didn't receive it super well. Uh, mm -hmm. And they lit up Caesar pretty good for that one, um, which. <laughs> which was really sad to see. Um, and just knowing like, okay, so you knew that they were in that phase, but then you can also look at that process. Okay, what worked? What didn't work? What do we need to change and adapt for the future? Yep. And the same thing in life, right? You go through, you go towards your goals, you go try something new. And if you have success, great. If you didn't have success or wasn't as good as you looked like, or even if it was, you can look back at it and go, all right, what would I change? What would be better about it? And that way you're continually improving and getting better every time. Huge. Huge fan. Yep. So let me ask you this here as we wrap it up. You, your energy is absolutely incredible. I love your enthusiasm. Where can people find more of you and get more of your energy and wisdom and all that? How can people connect? Yeah. So we're, we're actually, I'm actually in the process of setting up my, my site. I had my, my site set up that had everything in there. Um, so it's not up yet, but if you're trying to look me up on Facebook right now, uh, Facebook's going to be probably the, the most primarily place that I, that I, I hang around, man. Um, I can't remember the last time I actually went on Instagram or Twitter <laughs> or, 
you know, and a lot of that has to do with my non-negotiables. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, so on Facebook, man, just look up Cesar Hernandez. There I am. I wish I had a, you know, more official thing to tell everybody and say, Hey, yeah, just go to my website and you can blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't have that right now just because I took it down. Um, I took it down to get rebuilt and, and put uh, a few other aspects in there that I needed to. But uh, Facebook, Cesar Hernandez, and it's spelled C-A-E-S-A-R, not C-E-S-A-R for the nice. <laughs> my Caesar, it's not Cesar. I appreciate the Cesar, but I'm not Cesar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Caesar. My name is Caesar. I'm a I'm a king, man. So, anyways, um, but yeah, that's where they can find me on Facebook. Uh, you know, you can find me in the in the Power Nation uh um beta group, of course, if, if anybody's watching from there. You can find me there. You can look me up in, in that. And if you're not in beta group, then you're just going to have to join on, on beta group number two. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And we'll, we'll, we'll chat more about that later for sure in a future episode, hopefully. But yeah, check out um, Tony Horton and Power Nation, it's called, and the beta group two, which you should be able to join in the next, um, well, let's see, in probably early 2021, maybe late 2020, you'll be able to join. But we'll you'll check it out and keep an eye on that if you want to join. So um, also we'll have Caesar's um, Facebook profile in the show notes. So if you're interested in that, just go to spencermjones.com. Go to the Jones and Four Show, click on this episode, and you can get all the show notes for this, all the great things about protecting your piece, the tips, the strategies he shared, and also the direct link to his profile. So you can just go there and send him a friend request or chat with him. Right. If he's available and it fits within his block at that time, he will get back to you. He's yeah, really good about that. I'll tell you that. Um, he'll get back to you and let you know. So Caesar, thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom of, about protecting your peace. This has been incredible. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, Spencer, for having me. I appreciate it, man. Namaste to you. Have an amazing day. Go out there, be a champion that you are, man, because you're 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 a rock star, dude. <laughs> thank you, man. So are you namaste to our, you and our audience. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like it, all that good stuff. And we will catch you all later.